We're going to take a look at how conditions work in smart actions. You can use an AND or OR logical operator when chaining conditions together. However, this can sometimes be a little bit confusing if you're not aware of how these conditions are evaluated. To see how this works, what we want to do is set up a task list. I've made one called conditions, and I just created a handful of fields for numbers. So I have a field for one, two, three, four, and five, and these are by default set to those number values. And this is just so we can see how the conditions work. So when you set up your list, go ahead and set up those five fields, just simple number fields uh, set to those integers uh, using those default values. Um, additionally, what we want to do is create a text field called actions result. And we're going to use that to write some text uh, to check the result for those conditions. So go ahead and create an actions column. Um, I created an actions column and called it conditions actions. And then also what you want to do is make sure you adjust the column permissions. We don't want to show the actions or the um, result. We don't want to show that to the user. So just go ahead and make sure you hide that in the form view. So in the InfoWise action settings, I just set up two rules. The first one is just going to reset our message no matter what every single time. So on add and edit for the record, we're going to just write a value that said condition evaluated false. All we're doing is resetting this message and we know this will occur every single time. There's no conditions. Um, so this is just a reset. And then the other one is the test that we're going to do. So the rule will be checked every time we do an edit or add, but what we're going to do is change some things around just to see how this is going to work. So what you want to do is write this message, condition evaluated true for the action result text field. And we're just going to do it uh, for this list record item. So we use the ID equals ID. And I'll go ahead and delete these uh, rules that I had already set up. Um, we'll go ahead and start from scratch and look at how this works. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. So what we're going to do is just run some checks just to see what we're going to end up with with our result, depending on what we put in for the test conditions. So right now, if I edit my record, it will run those actions. So I'm not going to change anything. I just need to save. And you can see currently uh, we have condition evaluates false. Okay, so let's take a look and let's start um, checking different conditions just to see what would happen. Well, one doesn't equal nine. So uh, let's try one equals one. Okay, and just hit save and then I'm going to edit my record and we'll see a different message result there. Okay, that's true. One equals one. Okay, great. All right, now we're going to try something else. Now, one thing I'll comment, it always says and on the first condition. That's just part of the interface. So um, you're always going to start with that. So if we do one always equals one and two always equals two, that should evaluate true. I'll go ahead and edit my record. Okay, we can see it stayed true. Okay, and let's try to make it false using the and. So we're gonna say one equals one and two equals three. That's not true. Okay, we're expecting a false result. It's false. Okay, great. All right, so everything is very clear and makes sense so far. Um, so we'll get a little bit more interesting in a second. Um, so now let's say uh, or. Okay, so we're going to say one always equals one or two equals three. 
Well, that is true because one equals one, but two doesn't equal three. So this should evaluate true. We're expecting a true result here. And it did evaluate true, so that's what we expect. Now uh, we want to try chaining more things together just to see what would happen. Okay, so if we go ahead and add another and condition, we're going to say three always equals three. And we're going to say, well, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so one still equals one, and then we have, or two equals three. Actually, I'll change this. We're gonna do something a little bit different. So we're gonna say, yeah, we'll, we'll leave that. All right, so one does equal one, and then what we'll find out is this starts a new rule. So what we're saying is one equals one or two equals three and three equals three. Well, that second part of the or condition, these are chained together and that's gonna evaluate false. The second part of it will. The overall expression would evaluate true. Okay, so because that first part is true, this is still gonna evaluate true. and it does evaluate true. Okay, um, let's do something else. Okay, so if we do another or condition, uh, this is gonna uh, work independently. So I'm gonna say four equals four. Now, because it's an or rule, it's, it's start, breaks off from the previous set of conditions. So I can make everything else false and this, is still going to evaluate true. So we'll say one equals nine, that's not true. Or two equals nine, not true. Or and three equals nine, not true. Or four equals four, that is true. This works by itself. Okay, so even though those conditions at the beginning are going to evaluate false because that last or is true. This is going to evaluate true. Yep, it's still true. Now, if we put another and condition after that or, both of those things must be true. So if I uh, go ahead and go into the conditions and I put an and in and we'll do one for five. Well, we'll say five equals nine. That's not true. This last part of the clause says that four always equals four and five always equals nine. These two are chained together because of the and. So this is gonna be now false because we broke the last rule, okay. So this is a little confusing. We did run through it quickly, but this gives you a little bit of an illustration of how the and and or conditions chain together. The important thing to remember is that when you choose the or condition, it starts a new rule. It's not considering any of the preceding rules. And if you have difficulty in terms of chaining things together where you need to branch off uh, to have grouped conditions, you might consider actually doing an additional action to handle that situation um, if you're in any way limited. There's examples on the site. Please work through those and also try setting up these examples and make sure that you have a clear understanding of how these conditions are going to be evaluated.